Berlin Select Board uh, in order for the budget meeting. Um, to my left is Pete Kelly. To my right is Jeremy Hansen and uh, Angelina Catherine. Uh, with us also is Dana Hadley <laughs> somewhere and uh, Diane Isabel. Uh, So, so, I guess the question is, is, um, is uh, what do, with the changes to the budget, or with the, what the departments are asking, how does that change the tax rate? What we have with the tax rate is, um, and again, and I say this every time, but I have to say it, I'm using last year's grand list because yep. I don't know what to use and I do expect a little bit of growth in it um, not a lot we are expecting a lot in the next year or two but um, for now the tax rate using what I know for the tax rate I mean for the uh, grand list the tax rate would increase about two cents the municipal rate I'm talking about two cents um, per hundred uh, from 5508 to 5730. And are you including all the appropriations of everything? I am got including the appropriations in? that <clears throat> I know about, and that which we know quite increased. a few, um, which it do, isn't what they're asking for is an increase. I think we decided it was about a twelve thousand dollar increase. Let's see, we were at sixty eight thousand without the without. Oh, it was six thousand. It was six thousand yeah, dollar increase. Okay, so without. Um, the fire department it was like sixty eight thousand dollars in appropriations last year and this year if you know if everything gets approved uh, we're looking at like seventy three thousand five hundred basically and we do have some we haven't heard from yet which yeah. they still have an opportunity to yeah. so request that potentially could grow yeah. um, we have not heard from one two three four Five. We haven't heard from five that we had last year. When does that end? Um, when can they? I don't know the exact date. I believe it's the end of the month, somewhere around the. Really? With the same dates of petitions, I believe. They have to get in. Um, and how long is the is, is the Grange uh, still on the? Their program. We had a five-year program yeah. with them. Yeah. yeah. And I would say that was at least three years ago. Yeah, okay. I think we're on the fourth year. I think so too. Okay. Yeah. How are they doing? Have you heard? I've they heard they're doing pretty good. Yes, they're stable, solid. I think everything's okay. doing well. Good. Is that okay? Uh, um, so, um, with that, basically the budget this year, and I think that we're as in the budget, if you will, as in good shape as it is, because we're not buying any major pieces of equipment. Um, we did put some extra money in on the capital budget into for the highway reserve. What are we looking at as a percent increase? For a total percent of the budget. Mm -hmm. Looking at maybe and I didn't have that right in front of me, Diane, if you could do it. Well, I'm gonna need the number <clears throat> I gave you earlier. Yeah, well you're gonna take it's <laughs> Three million. All right, let's do this right instead of yes. Is in that first that first tab of your? So it's going to be this compared to that. And that's operating. I'm not putting in the appropriations in that. Okay, so I actually circled the wrong one then. Okay, well, I'm trying to do it fast. <laughs> and I'm also left handed, so I think my world's different. Your world is I definitely different. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to stick with it.
So to me, if I'm reading your numbers correctly, then we're looking at an increase of 69,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a 0 0.023 percent is what I'm looking at. Does that make sense? Point zero two three. Yeah, because it's sixty-seven. So 60, two point three is that? Would that equate to that? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I That's. Awesome. I was going to say two. Yeah. yeah. And that's probably driven by mostly salaries, wages. You mean for like the police or because... No, for all of us. For, okay. for police is more than 2%. Well, yeah. yeah. And ours is 2%. Yeah. And Bill's fully staffed? He is at the moment, yes. Let me look at the clock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said that. That wasn't... <laughs> Um, but he is, he has full officers. And that was, that was another difference, was last year, if you remember, we only budgeted half a year for the last position. And now we have, and Diane did the, she picked mid-range, because we don't, at that time, we really didn't know who we were going to have. Right. And, and I think that's probably a safe place to stay. Yes, because we're not going to get somebody that's going to be a sergeant who's going to be paid a lot more. Right. Our chances are we won't. Looking through the budgets, I don't really see um, police has um, an increase of forty-one thousand dollars. This is four percent increase. Oh, I had it right here, two point three three. Okay, never mind. Um, okay, so so my numbers worked out with yours. Yeah, okay, I was just checking you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we only went down, we went down 42000 in the capital budget because we didn't buy a piece of equipment, but we are putting $200,000 into that highway structures and, and yeah. equipment uh -huh. line. And we still did leave the 15000 in case we wanted to get a new uh, And server. we did, well, that, and that was the other thing. We had the new server in there, which was 10, and then that was, a, I also asked with five for a study on the building. <laughs> which yeah. may or may not be necessary. Be necessary. Yeah. Uh, in the budget, we have the money to fix Richardson Road. Yeah. The, or at least the, some of the engineering. We, we do. It's in this year's budget. It's in the 19 budget. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't put a specific amount for the 20 budget for Richardson Road I'm thinking we're going to be able to squeeze most of it out of the 19 budget, but I felt we had enough with the money that we're putting yeah. in highway structures and, and yeah. uh, equipment. And I've got to figure out how we're going to buy an, an excavator when we get to that point. Happy with it? Am I happy with the budget? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm ever happy with the budget, <laughs> but, but I think it's, I don't see what we, what we have that is so too, you know, I, I think for the, first of all, I think the rate will probably come in about even once they're done, the new grand list. Yeah. Um, and maybe our revenues will really use some more revenue than we had thought. Maybe we have some more, because um, we are conserv conservative on our revenues. I don't see that the department heads have really added a lot of extra things. I know the police did put more money in training and I support that. Um, highway did add money for salt and sand. No, that's going to be going up, so. You know, but nothing in there is like, stands you have out. to have it, you know. Yeah, it yeah. Stands out. <laughs> and I think as far as the um, administrative budget, Again, I don't really see other than, you know, the study for the building, which I snuck in. But, uh, and the server, I, I believe we really need to replace the server. You know, I, did get, I did get the, uh, on both of my emails. Did, good. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I came through this time. I don't know, Pete, did you get yours? You know, about a week later, I got a notice that you and Pete didn't get your, and it said something about 
and I forget now what it said. I sent it over to RB to try and find out what it said, but it was an odd message. It would make sense to Jeremy, but it was to me it didn't make sense. Which is <laughs> or something. You know? <laughs> We're not supposed to block your emails when you watch it. You know? <laughs> I wondered whether that was it. You know, I can't you, blame you. <laughs> even now, I have to be careful because some of the emails I get will be will turn up in spam. Yeah. Yeah, I just never know. Yeah. No. I agree. Yeah. But we have had, not so much lately, but I've had some that I've sent to Diane or I've sent to Tom, and two days later they get it. And so it's like. Could walk I, down the hall. <laughs> <way. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, well, if you're happy with it, you don't think we can do any better, but you think it'll take in with the well, grand I list. Well, I think with the grand list, it's obviously we are at this time, the way we do the budgets here. We're always way ahead, and things could yeah. change. Yeah. But I don't see what we what we really have, Brad. That we can really, yeah. Yeah. and even if we did, you know, it's not going to amount that much. We we need fifty thousand dollars for a penny. Yeah. So. Anything else, Pete? No. Jeremy? Anything? Else? Entertain a motion to adjourn the budget session. I'll move the adjourn the budget session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, I've taken call the Thursday, January 3rd, regular uh, Berlin Select Board meeting to order. To my left is Pete Kelly. To my right is Jeremy Hansen, Angelina Capron, and uh, with us also is Dana Hadley, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. Um, let's see here. Additions and changes to the agenda. I do have a few things that I would like to um, add to the agenda. One is an appointment for the Planning Commission. Another is I've got the thank you letter prepared for the resignation on the Planning um, Commission. And I guess that's it. The vote? What's that? Oh. The vote for the oh, I'm sorry. And the vote and the vote for the budget. That's right, I asked that, I just went right on ahead. Public comment? Hearing none. Right, Linda. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hearing none. <laughs> uh, Treasurer's report, right? Okay. Um, right now, we're already halfway through the fiscal year, which is hard to believe, but we've already gone, had six months go by. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going through trial balance, and I'm going by account by account. I'm just looking to see if maybe I've made some posting errors, which can happen. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go to Dana, and then we'll look at it just to see if we're where we should be, you know, at the halfway mark, and then we can discuss it with you after. So I'm going to make sure we're we'll be discussing that in the next few meetings. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you very much. Um, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I uh, move that we approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 19 G13 with checks 18753 through 18792 in the amount of $70,925.84 and payroll warrant number 19-13 for payroll from December 9th, 2018 <coughs> to December 22nd, 2018 in the amount of $41,712.91. Second. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. And now we go to Linda Mullen. Come on up. Bring it up for you. <laughs> well, Linda, um, we asked Linda to come in because we'd like for the board to accept the budget, the final budget. Um, I have sent you the draft, and I know you've read it from Budget page or audit? to page. Audit, I'm sorry. Where am I tonight? You know? <laughs> I think I should go and take two months off with pay, of course. Yeah. Um, the audit. And um, so Linda came in to uh, answer any question you might have and kind of give you an overview of where we are with the audit. And so maybe you'd like to talk to us about the fund balances and yeah. things like that, or any yeah. other thing that you think is important yeah. for the board to know. Okay. Yeah. I'll just kind of yeah. quickly kind of go over where you 
landed for the year. Um, I won't talk about Exhibit A and Exhibit B. That's the um, governmental activity. <coughs> that's where we take your reports that you usually see and turn them into like if you were a for-profit business where you're adding in the debt and the capital assets and all that. Um, but I know that's not what you use for your purposes. Um, so I'll start on exhibits. I don't know if you're following along or if you care to follow along. Um, but the general fund ended to uh, fiscal year 18 with a fund balance of just over a million dollars. <throat> Some of that is non-spendable, which is prepaids and highway inventory and a loan to the water division, I think that is. Um, and then there's some restricted money and committed money and assigned money. So basically those monies are already earmarked for various purposes, which are noted on page 39 if you aren't aware what they are. Um, but there is 535,000 that is unassigned and available to use for whichever purpose, whether it be you know lower the tax rate or whatever. That's the amount that is not earmarked um, from the general fund as of the end of fiscal year 18. That money, Linda, could be the board has the authority to use it to lower the tax rate, for example. They can, yeah. Um, <clears throat> if another purpose for that were to be, would that need a, a warning, an article in the warning for the well, public to approve? So there's f five different categories of fund balance. Um, non spendable is the first, the highest the order that I have them in here is the ability for you to spend them. You can spend basically the bottom. The tops are earmarked. Right. So the top is the non-spendable, which is the prepaid inventory and money you owe to other funds. You can't touch that because that's already either spent. Um, then there's restricted. That's money that has been given to you um, by an outside source with restrictions. You can never internally place a restriction on fund balance. Um, the town's fund balance policy considers the voters the highest level decision makers. So they're the ones who can commit funds. Um, so if the voters approve to set aside X amount for, let's just say, a bridge project next year or something two years down the road, and the voters approve it, that's committed funds. The select board has the authority to assign funds. Um, and so when you've committed or assigned funds, whatever that authority was, whether it's the voters committing it or the select board assigning it by a vote, you cannot take money out of that for another purpose other than what it was designated for without going through the formal process. So for committed funds, it's the voters approve to commit it for a certain project or purpose and you want to use it for something else, you have to go to the voters and say, you know, you would set aside this, we propose that we change it to this, you know, we're not going to do that project or we're not going to buy that, you know, so you need voter approval. So the same approval you got to commit that money, you have to go through with the voters to uncommit it. Same with the assigned. If you guys voted at a meeting to assign funds for a project or something, and you decide down the road that you're not going to use it for that, um, you'd have to do a formal board vote to unassign it or assign it for something else. And then what's left that hasn't been earmarked is the unassigned, which you can use to for whatever purpose. So the board you want. can make a decision. Say like they wanted to buy a piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. They could make that decision and have access to that money to use it for that? Right. It would go in. Um, Diane keeps a nice spreadsheet of right. all those, and it would just go in. And I know I think you usually... You answered my question better than I asked it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you guys have done that in the past where you voted on you know three or four things mm -hmm. and said we want X amount set aside for this. Mm -hmm. Diane adds it to her sheet, and then when, she, when it gets spent, she's tracking it, so it's... She's keeping a running balance of that. Is the recommended balance that towns have used, used to be a certain two times your budget or, or a certain percentage of your budget, I guess? Maybe um, more of a like 10 operating, of your budget, you know, your operating you know, budget. So many of your operating, you know, whether like it be two months or six months or whatever, yeah. yeah. Some towns actually do have a minimum fund balance policy, which they, they're 
policy is to keep either two months of operating or you know whatever so much percentage of next year's budget or something of that nature. Um, but I don't see that very often. But it is an option, you know, if, if you want to change your policy mm -hmm. to have that. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's not that it's really been a policy. Just we've always been doing it. Yeah, I mean, you, you just have built it in. Yeah. Right. Do you think there'd be any advantage to having it as a policy, or? I mean, not necessarily. Yeah. You know, but well, you don't you don't really know what the what the yeah. board is going to do ten years mm -hmm. from now. Yeah. You know, if if they aren't maybe as far sighted about trying to be, you know, think of the future, they might keep the fund balance a little lower or. But it seems with all that criteria above where we can't touch or we have to do and undo, and that would be a little bit harder to sp spend for us or just the board to spend it freely because if we commit it to something, it's we have to uncommit it. Right, exactly. So by the time you get down to what's left, it seems like there should be. Actually, I think, I mean, we've got what about half of our total fund balance is mm -hmm. uncommitted or un. Is that the word Just I'm looking about, for? Yeah. So about half, and I think that's a pretty, um, pretty safe good area. statement mm -hmm. of <coughs> previous boards that have been able to build that up. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if you had an emergency yeah, and you, you needed to decision. tap that quickly, you know, you you have it. And I think, being a taxpayer myself, I appreciate where the consistency in the tax rate because I do audit towns that try and keep it a little lower than that and then something comes up and next thing you know they have to get a loan out or you know so they've got a spike in taxes and then when they have a surplus they're reducing their tax rate so the taxes are kind of doing this where Berlin tends to be more like this so well, you do you, have enough to cover you create a false tax rate in a way if you use in, too much fund balance right. yeah so, does that answer you? Yeah, you did. Question? Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't ask it very well. No, that's okay. <clears throat> so, the general fund for the year um, ended the year with a loss um, of 29000 The year before had a $44,000 gain. So and we know what that was. That was the Green Mountain it's the property power tax. debacle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, not necess not solely, because if you look at budget, well, yes and no. Um, if you look at budget to actual, your total revenue was under budget by eighteen thousand, and I know property taxes was like sixty-eight thousand, mm -hmm. but you made up for it by some grants that weren't budgeted. The police department was under budget because they lost the contract for the so hospital mid-year. Yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah. that was some of that. And then over the expenditure side, that's really where you're saving, you saved it, you know, because um, your expenditures were 189000 under budget, you know, and that's between, you know, the police department not having to staff for the hospital that the contract was lost on. The highway was really under, under budget, um, so between those two things, you know, you had budgeted a loss of 155,000, and you end up with 29. So you were 125,000 better mm -hmm. than you budgeted. So you really came out okay. And sometimes that. with highway, that's just not possible. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Weather dependent. Right. Yeah. Let's take a look. Issue might be a bit different. Yeah. Um, and then in your proprietary funds, which is your water division and your water pollution fund. <clears throat> the fund balance, well, net position is what you call those funds versus fund balance. Um, the water pollution ended with a $1.5 million um, net position at the end of the year, and the water division is almost $1.9 million. And for the water pollution fund, um, 600000 of that is really your investment in your capital assets. Um, so the unrestricted portion is about 950000 whereas the Water Division Fund, 
more than your fund balance is actually in your fixed assets, and you're really your unrestricted is a negative fifty thousand. No, and that's because really of the just, age of the right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the water pollution fund ended the year with a loss of thirty thousand, which is actually pretty consistent with the year before. You know, that was like twenty six thousand the year before, and the water division fund was about a twenty five hundred dollar profit. Um, the year before it was one hundred and seventy three thousand, um, but the year before you had um, a lot more grant income, um, and this year here depreciation went up because of the assets being in service, so you have more expenses. So, um, And again, on page 39 is really showing you where you're committed and restricted and assigned fund balances, what they're for. Um, Did you a, see in your um, review, that's not the word audit, I want, is yeah. it? In your audit, <laughs> um, anything that we should be doing differently? Um, no, I mean, there was no findings for this year's audit. Um, I know there was an issue in the past with the grant reporting, mm -hmm. um, but that's over with. And no, we didn't have any issues. Everything, any questions that we had were easily resolved and, you know. Okay, yeah. Procedures are doing well? Yeah, you actually have very good procedures. So, and I don't know if I told you this last year, but we, Auditing is kind of, you do it risk-based. So we come in the day beforehand, the audit, which we call preliminary field work, and we, one of the things we do is um, a walkthrough when we select like a deposit at a payroll and a disbursement, and we kind of find out what your controls are um, and follow those all the way through your system to make sure that your controls set are actually working and are in place and are appropriate and you know things are being followed. We didn't find any issues there at all. So I just know in the past there have been because it's such a small department, small municipal office. Yeah. So I mean we take that and decide how much to audit. We you know we've gone into audits where we've had problems with the walkthrough and it's like, oh you know, geez out of three things we found two mistakes or whatever doesn't leave us feeling warm and fuzzy, so we have to do a lot more testing and, you know, and yeah. pick things that maybe we wouldn't on another audit. So. Well, and I think what Brad is, and I would agree with Brad, sometimes in a small organization, there's only so many people that can do, right. you know, this double control sometimes right. is hard to, hard to do. We try very hard to right. do as good, as well as we can. Yeah. Yeah. But the board hasn't asked me to hire, you know, six more people. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we are in good shape. You are, yeah. Um, Everything seems to be. Okay. Diane does a very good job. Staying, so. And I think what, um, and maybe I should have added this, was a vote to. Um, Accept the audit is what we need. I move that we accept the audit as presented. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. So you'll give me the what you need from me? Yeah, the rep letter. And then yeah. I also have a couple um, dollar amounts. There was the water loan and the water pollution loan that I have to get amounts withdrawn to the date you sign the rep letter. Okay, all right. So, rep letter will need to be signed by you and Diane, mm -hmm. I think a board member. Okay. So I don't know if you have it and want to do that to me. I don't think I've got Okay, well, when, I mean, I don't think we're in a mm -hmm. terrible party. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll probably hit Brad up to sign for the board. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all set. Thank you. Yep. Thank, Thank you, Linda, I appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, um, ordinance for the use of town roads for snowmobiles and ATVs. I don't know about the ATV part. Yeah, I don't know why I put that in there. Um, this is just for snowmobiles because that's what you voted on. Yep. Um, and I had given you the, this is a sample ordinance of, or was modeled after the model ordinance from the, um, the league. 
and we had talked about whether you were interested in doing civil fines and so forth, and you weren't. So I've removed that verbiage. Um, I have, I don't know if you got my email today, you had, at your vote last meeting, you had specified the hours of operation from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., so that has been put in. Um, this has gone to Rob, and he has um, blessed it. And if you're ready to adopt it, it would be 60 days before it becomes um, valid. Your motion? I move that we adopt the snowmobile ordinance as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And moving on to the conflict of interest policy. Right, I want Diane to stay for that one. Um, uh oh, <laughs> it's important. This is a this conflict of interest policy is a model. Again, I why invent the wheel when I can just go to the, the <laughs> league and, mm -hmm. and get their their uh, suggestions. And what brought this into mind? Um, we have a, a very good conflict of interest. Um, portion in the charter, and so I've not really brought this forward because we've already have it. However, we now have some grants that one of the new requirements is that the town have an official conflict of interest policy. That's where this comes from. Um, I don't see anything in this policy that causes me any does it mirror the concern. charter? It, 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 the charter speaks a little differently. It comes from it from a different angle, but yes, you know. And the charter isn't official enough. It has to be called a conflict of interest. It has policy. to be an actual policy. Interesting. So we you know. Have, so we have state statute, but they want a policy instead. Interesting. And and we can opt for that ourselves. Yeah. It doesn't happen. Well, you have the you have the um, authority to authority it. for the policy. Yeah. Does it have to be warned? It does not. It does not. And you don't have to. I'm not really asking for you to prove it tonight, because I'd like you to think about it for another, you know, if you haven't, because it's the first time you've seen it. Um, but that is the reason for that, and I'd like you to have a copy. Well, if we need it, do we really have anything to think about? Well, we only, I mean, you for know. For certain grants. For certain grants, and the one where it's come up with is the grant that I've been, it's been very painful with this grant for the um, hazard mitigation update, which needs to be done. I mean, that our hazard mitigation expired last May, and we've been all this time trying to get mm -hmm. the grant. We're not the only town that right. this has happened to, but. Um, but it just sort of sounds like if we need the grant, then that's a requirement of the grant. And I guess what I'm saying to you is that I don't see anything in that that you wouldn't right. approve of. Or, you know, could we just say, could we just adopt as our official policy yeah. the language in the charter? You could. I mean, if, if you would like to do that. I mean, it's, it does, that's why I didn't really consider the conflict of interest policy. I believe in the conflict of interest policy because I think it's important to have in writing what you expect. And the charter, I thought, did a good job of that. I, I think that, that has a bit more process. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I think that's good. I, I remember seeing that before, too. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that this would be a good, it's a good policy. It, it kind of mirrors our mm -hmm. charter. It kind of um, affirms what you meant in the charter. So did you say to me, was it quite clear to just trade them out? No, 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 we no. We just say that we, we're going to declare, we're just going to say that our official policy is the charter. I see. That, we're renaming our policy to be an official policy. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know that that necessarily will you know, satisfy the... the I, I think that people. I would suggest going with something along sure. this route. I hear what you're saying and I don't mm -hmm. disagree with you, but... Because you're saying this is more policy, this is more procedure. Right. And that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, obviously the charter doesn't address it. And a lot of the charter is dealing with elected officials and appointed officials. That, yeah. Whereas this is really everybody. 
and put that on for the next meeting. Sure. Anything else on this? You may have it. Yeah. My old side battery died. That's. Well, that's Sending your brain shut. <laughs> no, 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 no. You wonder when you close that if you were done. <laughs> yeah, might as well go home. <laughs> I just didn't want you to think I was just sleeping. Up. <laughs> okay. Nothing else on the uh, on the conflict of interest policy. Then we'll move on to the. Certificate of Highway Mileage, again. You don't have to say for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is an annual um, document that you sign, and this is... Wait a minute, Diane. Stay for a little bit. Okay. This would refer to the number of miles that we have in highways, and that's what our grant is based on. We have not added any highways this year, and we have not removed any highways this year. And so this form is just saying there are no changes in the mileage, but I do need to have, and they only give you three spaces to sign, so you'll have to sneak a space in if you sign it tonight. Move to adopt the, or approve the certificate of highway mileage for the year ending February 10th, 2019 from the town of Berlin. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. of how much was it on the budget? Percentage or dollars? Dollars. Um, about 70069 <laughs> Okay, in years past, we have taken money from the undesignated funds and used them to reduce the budget. To reduce the, reduce the red tax rate. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if we should do it again this year. Usually, That's you would have an opportunity to do that when you set the tax rate yeah, in July. Should. Um, so you certainly could, yes. you know, because basically you set your tax rate. We're estimating what the tax rate is, but the actual rate is set in July by you. Um, we would bring you the information that we have, the updated information with the new grand list, list total. And the correct appropriations. And, and the correct mm -hmm. appropriations, yeah, on, right. as well as updated revenues. <clears throat> Okay. So that's usually the first meeting in July because yeah. Diane's usually in a rush to get the bills out mm -hmm. right after that. Mm -hmm. and, but at that it time, seemed to me like it was we used to do it uh, in, in budget time to uh, try to level the budget as much as we could. Well, I think that we always, or since I've been here, you've always considered what the what we're trying to do is give you an idea of what how the budget. Mm -hmm is well, going to affect yeah. the rate. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think with Dana and I, the last three years is where we brought it up. This would be, based on this budget, this would be the rate. In, pri in previous times, I don't think people did that. The treasurer did not do that, or the town administrator. So that's why I think it might be different, yeah. because all of a sudden, the last three years, we started doing that, to just to give you that thought, mm -hmm. that you know, when we um, come in July, we'll, you know, it will really... And you have used time. money to offset the rate a few years ago when we had the light winter and we had a, a an, an excess in the just surplus in the, in the uh, surplus in the budget yeah. well it um, also had a surplus of uh consumables in the, in the highway highway department mm -hmm. right. so i think we had like a hundred fifty thousand yeah. that we used to offset the tax rate which was mm -hmm. great that year mm -hmm. yeah and then <laughs> you know and that's the problem i mean yeah. you get into so you certainly can use i mean we have Five hundred thousand you could use to offset the tax rate. Well, I, I, wouldn't, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend you to that. No, but I mean, but I'm just, I was just thinking about. You certainly could use the fifty thousand like or something like a, that. A one percent increase. Mm -hmm. But I think the time when you get into July, and we have better figures for you, yeah. um, is the time when we would be talking that we that you would be able to think about that. Okay. That's all I have. 
just try to see how they move. Right. Right. back. Right, and it, and it might be, it could very well, I'd like to say that the, the grand list is going to grow to do it. I don't think so, but not Well, if the grand list grows any amount, it should take in, uh, it would make it so you wouldn't have to have, have 50,000. I do am very, price. yeah, I'm very interested to see what happens with the update on the mobile homes because as you remember we're having those updated mm -hmm. and they'll be for the I never get the year straight 2019 or 2020 2020, 2020 yeah. um, consideration yeah. so the actual bottom line am amount for the budget is three million two thousand five hundred three for the operating budget yeah. okay and, that, and that's what we're right Okay. In addition to that, as you know, there's the special appropriations, which includes the fire department, which is two hundred sixty-seven thousand. Yeah, two sixty-seven nine sixty-eight. Yeah. Okay. So I move to um, adopt the budget in the amount of three million two thousand five hundred three dollars. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, budget passes. Thank you. That's all. Just gonna be on that drink. <laughs> we were hoping, Diane, you could find some more money somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, select board minutes approval for twelve six eighteen. Who was here for that meeting, Dana? Um, for the uh, for that meeting, you all were here for that meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Brad, could you add in maybe next the uh, appointment for the planning? Yep. Next. We will now do the uh, appointment for the planning commission. Um, Polly McMurtry, who you met last yep. fall, I think, was in. She was appointed as an alternate to the DRB. Uh, she is very familiar with the planning commission. She served in the planning commission in Faston, and she has indicated she would like to be on our planning commission. I have posted it as per our policy and um, no one else has come forward so I'd like you to consider Polly as a full member of the planning commission. Move to appoint Polly McMurtry to the planning commission. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries. letter I'd like you to sign for Jeff Farrell, thanking him for his service on the planning commission. Don't really need a motion on this, do we? I don't, no, I don't think so. You accepted his resignation. Yeah. The town administrator's report, Dana. Um, I have just a few things. First of all, I'd like to remind you that a week from today, Thursday the 10th, is your, the select board's public hearing on the zoning amendment update that is scheduled to go to voters in March. That will be next Thursday at 7 here. And it's a 
public hearing on zoning. Okay. So I'm hoping you can come. Um, Tim wanted me to mention to you, um, we're having a few concerns. We've given, the town's policy has been to give sand away to residents, and it's been a nice policy if you had needed sand. And we've had a tremendous amount of sand being used. Of course, it's been icy, but I mean, we've had pickup trucks showing up. We've had, we, we put sand over in Riverton trying to help people out of there, and we have it there for like one day, and yeah. the sand goes missing. Someone's taking it. Um, yep. And, and, and it's, I guess it's very hard. I hate to punish everybody, but we also can't run out of sand. Right. Yeah. Um, so I wanted you to be aware of the situation. We're monitoring it, but if we start to have a problem, we may not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, well, it sounds like we are having a problem. You know, Clearly. it's, uh, you know, we have signs there that kind of explain what it's for. It's for you to show up with your bucket and fill it not fill your pickup and sand your the neighbor two mile drive driveway or something. But. Are there cameras or we we don't have cameras. So motion motion sensor game camera or something yeah. like that. I mean I suppose we could um, <laughs> but when so when the sand disappears in a day. The camera does too. <laughs> <laughs> Do we take another pile over there? We have been because I obviously we slow that down. You know, I mean, you're just f feeding the fish. But I mean, pe people legitimately use the sand, though. Yeah. Well, if they get the chance. Right. Well, that's that's the thing. <laughs> if you don't put it back there, then the folks who are actually using it. Right. But if well, someone just apparently keep... everybody's using it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it were disappearing in a day, because I... maybe that's one of the ways we can lower the budget. We can just go start, you know, borrowing from Montpelier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's it has been a problem, yeah. and I just wanted you to know that if we may have to curtail doing it, you may hear from some of your con constituents. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the I think one of the troubles over where is it put at the fire at station? The fire house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perhaps one of the problems is um, is that uh, there's no real control, or if the people from Riverton had to come up here to yeah, the, up here to get their sand, leave a pile by the gate, and at least then the police department could kind of keep an eye on things till coming and going. Is but, that happening here too? Um, it has happened here a little bit. I mean, yes, it's right out in, on this side of the gate where, yeah. where the sand is. Um, but, you know, this is we're not monitoring it. We're not watching people come and go or yeah. or what happens at nights, weekends. Um, Could you put a time on it? Like, you know, eight till I mean if we Well it's not gated, that's you know, but if you put it inside the gate. Well then you have then you have people going into the into the town yard mm -hmm. I think you I did there. have a, a discussion with a gentleman who said, Well if it's not there I'm gonna go and take the sand out of the pile that's in the sand yard. And I said, no, you're not. <laughs> because, I mean, that would be stealing, in my right. opinion. But, um, the other, it's, it's a slippery slope. Yeah. Mm. And a hard one. You want to help people. You want to be able to. Well, when you stop and think of it, it is kind of their saying they paid for it. Exactly. Yeah. But, but it's, it's up to us to control it. Are those Berlin town residents necessarily? Yeah. yeah. But you know, well, the other thing is, is that they're taking it by the pickup truck load. They're doing right. uh, commercial work. That's what I was right. saying. Right. If somebody is taking all of it, then people aren't getting to use it anyways. But you know, a guy talked to me about the ATVs and the snowmobile trails. And he said, I know who those blah, blah, blah are that are causing all that trouble. And I called them up and said, you guys are giving us a hard time now. Because the select board may or may not allow us to, to you know, build trails. So you, you look at the sand the same way. We're going to take the sand away because somebody's stealing it from all of you, and we're not going to allow that to continue anymore. If you know who's stealing your sand, tell them to knock it off. Because we're not going to, we're not going to have the police. But it's just sort of a motivator to say we can't allow this to go on forever. If it is obvious, I mean, Tim has spoken to people out there. Yeah. If it's obvious that they're not, they're taking more than what they should, what fair we share. intended. Um, he does speak up. Right. I mean, it's hard. The guy pulls in there with a short. Sure. They're out in five I, minutes or ten yeah, minutes. Yeah. Um, the other issue that I'd just like to 
I think it's three years ago that the mall came in and talked about the downtown designation. And they hired a consultant to help them with it. And it's starting to become closer and closer to a reality. Um, we're meeting with, Tom and I are meeting with uh, Mike Brushman weekly now. Uh, updates getting ready to, because once the, the one piece we're waiting for to be resolved so that we can apply for the downtown designation is the, plan, uh, the uh, zoning to be approved, the updated zoning. We're waiting for the master plan, that's happened. Now we're waiting for the zoning, after which the plans are to submit an application um, to the state for that. We've had a very good relationship with the mall, but I also think that as the town, we're separate from the mall. And while this is, the board had, a, had supported this designation, we need to be sure that we, if this is what we want, that we support it and we look to the future. Um, we're, we're meeting with the state next week to find out what things to think about in the application. And there are, it's, it's amazing, but in the four years since I've been in Berlin, Berlin has changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to see a lot of changes. And I think the downtown designation will change dramatically um, the, the face of the town for the better. Um, but I guess I just wanted the board to know that while this has been kind of quiet for a long time, waiting for certain pieces to fall in place, they're now falling in place and, and we're off. Mm -hmm. um, so do we get a post office or something? I well, mean, it city? would be great, wouldn't it? Well, um, I mean, but I guess I don't understand. You know, but as you remember when he, when he presented to you, and I don't, that was, I guess it was three years ago, um, the intent was to turn the mall road into a main street, for example, to, to change the mall to be more like uh, um, the stores right on the street like we grew up with, you know, um, less parking, housing, more housing. That is a huge problem. Um, one of the major employers in town just told me they were having, they had 50 jobs they couldn't fill because people had nowhere to live. Really? You know, the, and and I believe that. I mean, it's a problem all over Vermont. It's not, I mean, affordable housing is what I'm, what I'm going with. Some of these jobs on the lower echelons. Mm -hmm. And so it's a problem. Um, and so this might, you know, there are some housing um, firms that are interested in maybe doing something over there. Um, but what I'm trying to say, I'm not saying it very, very well, but the town needs to be sure that they look after their own interests on going forward. Speaking of the mall, how is the uh, how is the um, assisted living coming? That was at the um, DRB um, last night. Today, yeah, last night, um, and the meeting went very well. Um, DRB is deliberating. I. I can't speak how they're going to deliberate, but I think it's probably pretty positive. Yeah. Can somebody fill me in on that? There's Assisted living in... There is a, um, a, a project planned to happen over at the mall. This project is going to buy a piece of land from the mall. Um, Are they going to buy it or lease it? Maybe they're going to lease it. It's. On the Walmart side, there's a there's a West End flower shop. As you come around the corner, you first see the the garden center of Walmart. It's right there, immediately on your left. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a rather large project. They're going to have um, apartments for um, people that qualify age wise, mm -hmm. as well as. A mechanism for when you no longer can be in your own apartment and you need assistance. Um, it's one of these places that you might have an apartment and you have a little kitchen area in your apartment, but the main meal of the day is prepared in a dining room. Right, setting. yeah, like in Northfield, yeah. Like Things like that. The, the manor. Mayo. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. And this is a, a company that does this has a few in Williston and one in Essex, I believe. And they've been quite successful. Um, and they've done a very nice job. I think it will be a nice addition. Yeah. <clears throat> the first thing that comes to my mind is that is, is it safe for people for disabled and elderly people being right next to the mall? Would that be a safe area? I, I, well, it's a separate I, building. I mean, it's it is separate. I mean, it is separated from the mall from what the pictures we saw by a couple hundred feet at least. But the breakdown is there's 98 units. I don't remember the breakdown, but I think only 18 of them were for assisted. Then there was lower income. I mean, it was... It was 98 units. Yeah. Right, wasn't that right? It's supposed to be like, uh, well, I'm not sure because the building is in three wings and there's parking included, I think it's under the building. It's the parking's going to be underground. Yeah. And then... And then you have the the building is four floors, yeah. mm -hmm. but we do have a lot of plans, Angela, and I could yeah. go over with you. Um, okay, I'm yeah. sorry, I don't have them with me. I'm trying to think. Tonight, what, it was it was um, it was uh, it wasn't low income. It was yeah. just one was one was assisted living. Right. There were one was for people who could look at. I think like a nursing at, facility. There were yeah, levels then, of it. Yeah. yeah, and then there was one that was. Um, just small. No, it was uh, memory care for people with right. dementia and Alzheimer's. Right. So that was, there was 18 units for the most assisted. And then it yeah. sort of dropped down to 40, whatever the numbers were. Yeah. Well, so this is in the works. Yes. Well, it's moving right along. Yeah. It's through DRB. Yeah. It's, they went to the DRB. I mean, I should probably so. go to this meeting. I just, I think, mm. I mean, my thought about... <laughs> I just worry about like somebody with dementia wandering off onto. Well, assisted. Yeah, living yeah I think I, I yeah, think it's, well, to answer your question about being safe, I think they obviously someone with dementia would be right. in in a section that they will have monitoring available. Right. It's also one of the pluses is that it's it's easy for people to go shopping. They don't have to drive places. Right. And the other the other thing that they were that they were uh, they mentioned was that. Once you move into the least care part of it, as you age, you simply move from one apartment to another. You still stay in the same surroundings and everything else. So for people who have uh, dementia, that's a <clears throat> big plus, or coming down with it. Now, are they going to build, like, a, uh, like, so I'm assuming that low-income people would have their children. So would they have like a walkway? In the I, think, school? I think it's. Is it el not necessarily elderly? It's, not, it's all elderly. It's, it's, there's an age limit. To yeah, it's not. Oh, there isn't. I just don't right. There's it's, no kids. It, it's yeah. it's all it's elderly. Yeah. It's not like a sixty-five plus. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's not like a housing for families. But that is something that has been discussed. You know, having somewhere that families can live affordable housing. Okay. But that's not a plan yet. I know they they had mentioned that if you wanted to tour one of their facilities, they'd be glad to show you. Yeah, right. That and I'd be interested interest. going down because um, my aunt lives in one of Massachusetts, and it's really nice. It's really very nice. She's still in an apartment. She's a hundred years old, mm -hmm. but you know, yeah. is it one of theirs? One of these guys? No, it's, similar. but it's a similar okay. model. I mean, it yeah. has. They have like apartments, and then they have if you can't handle that anymore you go into a different type of and setting different more and more care as well and all of these are owned by one family the family that's building that's this. doing this one yeah. yeah so it isn't a company it's a privately owned project but i invite you to stop in some time and have time to show you the plans sure it's, it's really they're really pretty nice sure yeah so the post office sounds nice <laughs> I'm not sure. You know, the town, the town center, I mean, you know, I see, I see things happening. Um, things are expanding. The hospital will be expanding mm -hmm. probably. You know, that whole, that whole area is right for that. Well, I have sort of always thought of Berlin as the ugly duckling. You know, you look at Barry and you look at Montpelier and people say, well, Berlin's got to catch up. Well, we're not going to catch up and be another Montpelier or another... Barry, I think the structure will be different. The layout will be quite different. Well, I think Berlin's going to bloom. Everywhere. I mean, yeah. you, right, you know, right. I mean, it's so divided. Right. But I'm just thinking, like, 
you know, has sandals been found? Is there anything going on where sandals used to be? I'm just thinking like a post office next to So you mean like staples, staples nice. where next to Shaw's, is that what you mean? No, no, sandals. Like sandals was used to be taken a, a restaurant at the airport. Used to be a restaurant. Yeah, the state kind of moves, goes Kicked through. them out. Oh, I don't know what Beach that is, I guess. Yeah. Oh, but I mean, they're in and out of there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So is that... So that's moving along. So I think that's, I just wanted you to be aware that things will be happening with that. And we will be updating you as we, we go along. And we do need, as I say, to have some, a little bit of independence as we go further. So how, I mean, I have no qualms about the, about um, Main Street in Berlin, but the only thing I worry about is, is that one of the things that makes the mall so attractive to a lot of shoppers is simply the fact that you have parking. Mm -hmm. right. And if you narrow it down to a street. Well, I think that there's yeah. a lot of ideas that have been brought up, and I, they're all just ideas now, so I won't mm -hmm. go through them. But I think parking is very much in their minds to yeah. preserve adequate parking. The thing you should know, though, is that I don't see any getting around accepting when the main street becomes the main street, the town accepting that street is our street. Yeah. <clears throat> so that that is really what I had for you today. Again, the meeting next Thursday for the public hearing. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, David. Uh, you need to convene the liquor board. Move to recess the school board and convene the liquor control board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. What we got? We have a catering operation from Woodbelly Pizza. They are going to cater a surprise party for Jennifer over at the. Um, I was surprised it's going to be if we keep talking about it. Well, I maybe mean, that's not it. I forgot that. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> I left the cat out of the bag. Um, Nobody's watching. They're going to be catering a party at the Grange. Uh, it's going to end, as it turns out, it's this Saturday is the planned date. And so they're lucky that we were having a meeting so I could talk to you about it. I have no reason. I don't know. Um, one belly pizza, but again, I have no reason to tell you not to approve it. I've heard they're amazing. I've yet to go there, but I haven't, I haven't had them. I've heard good things about I've too. heard really good things about that place. Oh, really? Well, then I will. I will. Ch I will do some research for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll get our pizza again. Um, move to approve the uh, um, catering license for Wood Belly Pizza for the sixth. Second. Aye. I mean, yeah. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Jumped out a little bit there. It's all good. Thank you. Uh, reconvene the select board. Move to adjourn the control board and reconvene the select board. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Round table Pete. No. Jeremy. We good. No, so. And Bleeder. Motion to adjourn. Uh, any meeting in the executive session? No executive session. Second. Aye. Aye.